Do you remember a time when Minecraft looked and sounded like this? When boats would break if you touched anything on accident while you were in them. Or maybe when shields weren't around to protect you from all of the mobs that you encounter. Or how about when Netherrack looked like this? What the heck is that, dude? Well, I sure don't. I'm still a pretty new Minecraft player. I've only played five out of the 20 updates that Mojang's released, and I feel like I've missed out on a lot of history. But today, I'm going to go back in time to complete all of them. Make it to the end and complete the dragon fight in each version. And I'm only gonna give myself two days to do it. Because we like a good challenge. Can I achieve my goal and conquer every Minecraft update in under the 48 hour period? Well, there's only one way to find out. But first, a few disclaimers. One. I am going to time every run. This timer keeps track of each current run as well as the total time to make sure we don't go over the 48 hour goal. But full transparency, it's manual. There's going to be times that I forget to start it, stop it, pause it, or resume it. Sorry, it's not perfect. But you'll have to take my word for it being pretty close to accurate. Two, I'm not great at this game. Yet, at least. I so badly wanted to attempt this in hardcore mode, but since I've never touched so many of these versions, I figured that was an unrealistic expectation to put on myself. We'll stick to survival on hard difficulty and maybe attempt hardcore later. And three, I was pretty ill for a lot of the time working on this project. So I apologize for the sound of my voice in some parts of the video. Just wanted to give a heads up. But with that out of the way, where do I begin an adventure as big as this? Not the beginning. While that would make the most sense, I figured I'd be far better off warming up with the time period that I know best, the present. All right, I'm ready to wing it on this challenge. 1.18. Spawning into 1.18, my initial goals were pretty much the same as they would be in any version. Get the basic materials together and then set myself up with iron armor and tools, which turned out to be pretty easy on this seed with a shipwreck and a buried treasure. After this, I found a village nearby as well, which pretty much completes everything I could need in the overworld. All done just before the sun went down, which boosted my confidence. I mean, I think I'm gonna be breezing through the 1.18 gameplay anyway. I really wanted to zoom through this run so that I could get to all the old versions that are new to me. And I thought I was set up to do just that here but when i decided to enter the nether that's where i began to lose control what? you have got to be kidding me oh shh look at all of the f holy i'm not ready for this this is really bad what the heck <laughs> dude i'm glad that i demonstrated why i couldn't do this challenge in hardcore right off the bat holy i'm gonna try to re-enter grab my stuff see what happens wait Oh my, some of my stuff did end up here. That's crazy. You've got to be kidding me, dude. That's, that's kind of scuffed. Uh-oh. Woo, woo, woo. No, 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 no. Bro, what the frick is this game? <laughs> so if it weren't for the number of mobs around my portal, this would have been a pretty great spawn. Obviously having the fortress is nice, but I also saw before the magma cube pulled the old sneak around the back trick. I have a warped forest too, which means I can get ender pearls pretty easily. So after re-entering and blocking off my portal, I found my spawner, collected nine rods, and started trapping endermen. Come here, endermen. Time for your favorite boat ride. Yeah, you love your boat rides. This strategy of using warped forest for pearls is certainly my favorite in 1.18. In this version, I could still go to a bastion and try to trade with piglins for pearls, but the chance of getting them is significantly lower than they were back when bastions were first introduced. And not to mention how dangerous that is. I'd have to face piglin brutes to do that, and uh, based on how the run's gone so far, I don't think that's my best idea right now. With all the ingredients for my eyes of Ender, I made my way back to the overworld to begin the end game. All I had to do was follow the eyes to the stronghold, a journey that I thought would give me the opportunity to showcase the beautiful landscapes that were added in 1.18. But this world didn't have anything cool to offer, just a bunch of flat islands. But we all know how good 1.18 is supposed to look, so I'm not disappointed. Eventually, I had located my stronghold in the middle of the ocean, dug down, and found my portal room, where surely nothing would Whatever. go horribly wrong. Rick. <gasps> Are you serious, dude? The freaking silverfish? All right, now let's end this game. There's no way I make three massive mistakes on this run, right? Ooh, I think I scuffed it. Wait, wait, this is fine. Uh-oh. Okay, this is not fine. Never mind, it's fine.
Whoa! Oh, I'm dead. I poured my bucket already. Dude, I thought he was perching. I thought he was going in for the perch that whole time. All right, this is it. See you later, dragon. 1.18. This is supposed to be the easy version. I call this the warm up. Slower than I would like, but still the right pace that I need to hit. Hopefully, I'll be able to make up some time with other later versions because the next one we're playing, I fully expect to go slowly. We're going all the way back to 2011 with version 1.0. Now, I knew there'd be noticeable differences in the 1.0 release, but as I created a new world and loaded it into the game, I didn't expect to find so many all at one time. <laughs> Look at this seed. I actually got a no tree seed first go. Do I not have my skin? Ooh. I've lost my skin. There's no sprint. Oh, no, there is. It's just not control. I gotta actually double click W. Oh, and the swimming. The swimming. There's no swimming. I'm actually stuck walking on water like this. Since the seed had no trees in sight, I had to slowly make my way across the ocean to find somewhere else to actually start the run. Oh, Minecraft Steve. Take me by the block and lead me to the land that you see over there. I see a tree. We're in business. Oh, this is another island. At least I can make a boat. While the process for gathering materials is pretty much the same as it is in any version, the block textures, sounds, and mechanics made me feel awfully out of place. That is, until I heard something familiar to make me feel at home again. Oh, oh my gosh. I haven't heard music in game in so long. Normally, I like to play Minecraft without music for the sake of making videos, but this time, I let the sound of subwoofer lullaby carry me through the early grind. More iron there. Do they have shields in this version? No, but I can make a sword. And can't I block with the sword? Oh, that's so cool. Okay, that doesn't really work, huh? Oh, the boats. I forgot, yeah. They're gonna be slow. Sure enough, there's an Enderman right there. He just picked up a block. Oh, how do you get how do how do you get out of the boat? How do you get <laughs> Oh no! How do you get out of a boat in this version? So quiet. I can't seem to find a good landmass anywhere either. I am two thousand blocks out. If I get to 3,000 blocks out, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna take the 30 minutes extra, start a new world. And there we go. I made it 3,000 blocks out, still full ocean all around me. That's the only land right there. It's another island, series of islands. There's nothing. I'm gonna quit 1.0 AV part two. Much better, this is much better. I have sheep, I have food. I got, I got everything I need. This new seed was good enough to quickly get me back to where I was on the first one. And I was even lucky enough to get an ender pearl in the same cave as my iron. Yo, I got my first pearl. Let's go. But spawning into an actually decent biome allowed me to fully witness the beauty that this early version still had to offer. Something about the quality of the fog and the block textures gives the game a look that honestly works for me. In game, this is really pretty. It's like a different texture pack. It looks so nice. I was not expecting this. There we go. Nice sleep animation. Looks good. After taking that break to admire the visuals, I was ready for the 1.0 nether, but I learned that the process of getting there isn't quite the same as we're used to. Flint, steel, wait, Monka, what? How do you craft this? What? Oh, so it's like, you can't just put it anywhere. That's what it is. That's cool. I like that. So now what? Now I'm looking for a lava pool. That's a lava pool right there. That means I'm gonna put my respawn point right here. I can't get out of bed, frick. We got 10 minutes to go look for the fortress now then. All right, I guess let's go. Let's see how this works. No shot is the portal been the same this whole time. Wow, that's kind of crazy. I really wasn't expecting that. All right, well the good news is, well frick, that's not. Are we okay? Do the corners have to be filled? All right, let's give that a shot. See what happens there, huh? No. What's up right now? 
This really stumped me. I thought I was gonna be forced to mine diamonds to get my own obsidian for a portal. And I started to do that until night fell, which meant I had to stop and hunt for Enderman. Although I've never played this version, I've seen a few pre 1.9 speed runs and I know a little bit about the strategies. A simple one that I remembered is running around the overworld looking for Enderman and building these little two block covers every time you see one. And it made for a smooth hunt overnight. I collected five pearls. So it was good to know I wouldn't need too many days to finish the game. In the morning though, I thought to try building another nether portal, but in a bit of a different way than I did yesterday. And I'm not sure why, but this time the game felt like letting me go. Ah, that's what it did it. It's the blocks right in front of it. It's so crazy. Right in the soul sand. Since this is old, oh, and there's a fortress right there. Heck yeah, since this is old Minecraft, it's actually like, I'm safe here. Oh my gosh, okay. Old netherrack, old lava. I say the overworld was beautiful. The nether certainly isn't. Let's go ahead and get to work on the blazes. I don't even think there's wither skeletons in this version that I gotta worry about. Oh my god! What are the odds? What are the odds? That's so annoying, dude. Fireball shot at me right as I jump over the gap. <laughs> Am I gonna die in every version? After I picked up my stuff, it was already about to turn to night, which means I had to get back to the overworld to fight more Endermen. And since I appear to have lost my food in the lava after I died, I had to rely on death resets to refill my hunger. I will win. No. Oh, he's not? He's not hers, dude. <laughs> The next day, I was back in the nether where I finally made it to my blaze spawner. Blazes did feel a bit different than they do in current versions, though I couldn't quite place my finger on what it was about them. Killing them did go pretty much the same as it would in my current world, other than the volume that I had to deal with. This part is loud. But by now, I had faced just about everything that I needed to to beat this version. I had to spend a few more nights hunting Endermen, a day collecting materials for arrows, and by about the two hour mark, I was ready to find my stronghold, which is a bit harder than it is in the modern versions. A lot of the F3 tools like chunk borders didn't exist here, as far as I could tell at least. So while I had to hunt the more traditional way, once I got an eye to go down, I was able to dig right into the portal room, which may be the most modern looking feature of 1.0. It's crazy how long this room's gone unchanged. Strangely enough, even though this was the first version the end was added to Minecraft, I almost get the feeling that it wasn't quite ready for this release. Inserting the eyes in the portal makes no sound. Completing the portal makes no sound. The dragon makes no sound, and it's not even called a dragon. Boss health. <laughs> and on top of all that, the boss doesn't even have the ability to deal damage. It kind of just pushes you around the island. Oh, wait, that was like, that's such a wimpy push compared to normal. <laughs> Dude, I kind of like this. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oh, easy. This is going to be easy. I didn't realize that you run away as soon as you hit it. Whoa. Holy moly. The jump scare. The stealthy silent dragon. Holy moly. As long as you didn't regen, I mean, we're in good shape. I just got to wait for her to come in to charge me a couple of times. I was so scared of this dragon fight, but it's like, it really, it comes in and you bop it on the nose and it flies away and you just wait around for the next one. Good game. GG, dragon. No sound. I can't believe they released 1.0 with no end sounds at all. Literally no sound. No outer islands at all, huh? No portal. It's really sad when the current version is only 20 minutes faster than 1.0 for me, a version that I've never played in my life. 1.0 was actually a lot smoother and a lot more fun to play than I thought it was. With a total time of two hours and 50 minutes, my first ever pre 1.9 run was now complete. However, I was now officially behind schedule by 21 minutes, but considering I learned a lot here to help me with other runs and that I had that 30 minute wasted seed in the beginning, I'm not too concerned about my pace. I thought that the next version that I'd be playing would help bring my average down, but sadly, I had no idea how wrong I was. I've always said that 1.13 was my first version of Minecraft, though I didn't play it very long before 1.14 came out. I figured I was gonna be pretty comfortable with it, despite probably not remembering some of the details about it. I actually never saw a village in 1.13. The world that I played for that one week had no, I don't, I never saw a village in that world at all. I have a lava pool right here. This is setting up to be a pretty okay run. Whoa, the golden apples were even different in this version. There's so much stuff that I thought I knew, but I must have played it for such a short amount of time that I just never noticed how weird things looked. Never saw these kind of villagers, but they can trade. That's cool. Never saw wheat like this. You know, maybe I've been wrong this whole time. Maybe I did start in 1.14, just didn't know it. Yep, 
I was right. I later went as far as looking up my receipt for purchasing Java Edition, comparing it to the 1.14 release date and realizing, huh, actually I've never played 1.13. I didn't let that stop me though. I still tried to speed through this like I knew what I was doing. Early game, the same as I'm used to. Controls, the same that I'm used to. The nether though, lags worse than any version I've played. Holy, the lag. We're gonna be all right, game? Why is it so bad? It's something in this direction that the game does not like. That only slowed me down for a few minutes though. Finding a fortress and collecting blaze rods was as easy as the overworld grind. So exiting the nether in under 50 minutes, I was going just as fast as I had to. All I needed was the ender pearls. But that got me stuck on this run. I attempted to play this the same as I did in 1.0, but instead of using the two block bunkers, I would just trap Enderman in boats to kill him. However, unlike 1.0, my Enderman rates were incredibly low. Only three pearls on the first night and two on the second. All while working the hardest I ever have for him. I only have five pearls after two nights of searching. Might as well go look for the stronghold and maybe we'll get lucky. Find some pearls in there. Three out of my five eyes broke by the time I found the stronghold chunk, and I spent the next 30 minutes hunting at night and looting my stronghold for only three more pearls, literally right where I was two days earlier. At this rate, I was gonna have a long way to go to finish the run, and that's when something became very clear to me. I needed a different strategy. We are building an Enderman Tower. This is something I've seen in other speedruns, and I hope it works for me. We build up 128 blocks, put a bed up here, set my spawn point, and we see if any Endermen spawn. If there aren't any, we can try again. I thought that the ability to rapidly spawn cycle mobs would help me speed up the run. Pearls were the only thing keeping me from finishing this. But no, no, it wasn't any faster. An hour and 15 minutes it took me to get seven more pearls. And still, I wasn't out of the woods yet. Because upon entering the end, I quickly learned that this is not the same Ender Dragon that I know from my Minecraft worlds. What? Oh, I guess the dragon does do the weird perches still, huh? Oh, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I think I'm about to get hit in outer space. Yeah. I actually realized it's much closer to the bedrock dragon that I've fought before, but not before she killed me a few times. Dude, are you the, what? How do you dodge this? That's gotta be impossible to dodge. Don't man, come on, give me a freaking, look at this mother. Let's see what happens if I chill out in the center. Okay, not smart, not smart. Thank goodness, dude. Holy moly, I never wanna to touch 1.13 again. Four hours. I'm starting to think that this 48 hour goal is a little too ambitious. I'm way behind schedule. This run took so long, in fact, that over the span of it, I went from feeling fine to physically ill. I am sick as mess all of a sudden. I feel so terrible. I thought that maybe I was just tired, but yep, it turns out I was sick. I had to take yesterday off, and while I would like to be editing today, there's no shot. I I'm just gonna play Minecraft. 1.3.1 specifically, because apparently this is the version that added the first villager trading. I might be wrong, but this is what I saw on the wiki. After seeing the old villagers in 1.13 for the first time, I wanted to come back and see them in their original version. And again, this is another thing that makes me surprised that 1.0 released in the state that it did. Because villagers have been around since the beginning, but it took two updates before they had any function. Maybe there was a good reason for it though, because whatever it took to get villagers to work seems to have made other things busted. Yo, apparently this is the first version to have these kinds of villages too. In my village, I found an old version of the cleric who was looking to trade some redstone. And I thought that I could maybe level him up and get ender pearls, just like the new villagers. So the first real play I made was digging the strip mine. I spent a full day collecting almost two stacks of redstone only to realize, oh, that's for buying redstone. Frick, man, I'm so dumb. Now I'll be honest, I should have pursued this further. I did at least trade for one emerald just to say that I did it, but since I was sick, I really felt like just getting on with the run in the ways I knew how. I built the same Enderman Tower as I did in 1.13 and for some reason decided to sleep through the night when it was finished. And the next day the misplays continued as I was in the nether looking for a fortress. Uh oh. 
Clearly, my head is not in the game. It was definitely hard to play like this, but I did eventually get my stuff back and make it to the fortress. I had a hard time killing blazes, and they made me use almost all of my food by the time I collected 10 rods. But it didn't really matter much, because I didn't need food to collect the enderpearls, as I was going to be dying a lot. The Enderman Tower certainly worked better here than it did in 1.13, but it was still far from flawless. That may just be because I don't exactly know how to build them though. But still, only two nights to collect well beyond the number of pearls that I needed. I couldn't complain. And if you were wondering what I was doing during the days on this part of the run, well, I was feeling sick here and feeling sick here. But I also made sure to collect some more materials I might need. Two hours and 20 minutes into the run, I was off to find the stronghold. And the end game felt almost identical to 1.0. Dig into the portal room, no sounds here, no sounds here. Boss health is still a thing, but at least he does damage to you now when you collide head on. Overall though, it was still a pretty easy fight. Still no sound. GG. I'm going back to bed. I'm still falling further and further behind each run that I complete, but we're about to make up a lot of time on the next version, the one that I now know is my first. We're going from the weirdo old villager trading to the new in 1.14, and Mojang blessed me with a perfect seed for just the occasion. Right on a village. And with a blacksmith first go, that could not have been a better seed. And a lava pool, holy moly. As soon as I got a look at my spawn, I knew exactly how I was gonna beat this run. Iron from the blacksmith, golem, and a nearby ravine, a free ender pearl in a cave. That part I didn't actually know, but I'll take it. And by 10 minutes, I'm in the nether, find the fortress, and shields in this version make it easy to kill blazes. On my way out, I get another free pearl, a third, and a fourth. Dude, I am freaking cracked out of my mind on this seed. By 23 minutes, I'm ready to go the trade route for the rest of my pearls. Farmers got me enough emeralds to level up my cleric, and after some stick and clay trades, I almost buy enough pearls to finish the run. I just needed one more day to reset the villager trades again, and this could possibly sub hour. But I should have known that that'd be too good to be true, because the game quickly put me back in my place. I keep losing my cleric. It's the only guy I still need, where is he? That better not be my cleric down here, dude. Are you serious, man? Oh my god, dude. Great, man. A day later than I should have, I got all the materials I needed and headed to the stronghold. Still on pace to be my personal best for this challenge by far though. I managed to find some exposed diamonds in the stronghold before heading to the end where I got to face my favorite dragon. 1.14 appears to be the first version to have the modern day dragon AI, but it seems to lag a lot more than it does in 1.18. I thought that I could one cycle it, but the lag and the insane particles that I've never actually seen before really threw me off. Luckily though, I brought a backup bow and arrows, because even Stranger, as soon as the dragon left this perch, she entered this weird holding pattern. She wouldn't perch again, she wouldn't shoot fireballs, she just spun until I finished the fight. Hour and a half, all right, we could be back in business. This is the big one. This is probably the most exciting version yet. Version 1.1. This is the one that added pirate speak. We have pirate speak now. And I am indeed going to play by yourself. Shape a new sea. Uh, I'm gonna assume swashbuckler is survival. Uh, okay, I need to, I need this back on English for a second. Difficulty is indeed on hard. Hit E to take a look at your loot. Your loot. I'm plundered. Crafting table. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize they changed the name of every item. Piece of timber. That's great. Okay, this really plays the exact same as 1.0, for the most part. Except things were a bit more fun to craft, I guess. Chest plate of steel. Yeah, put that puppy on. Look at me, crafting another portal like a pirate. Arg, I guess. I don't know. I'm gonna commandeer ye fortress. Oh my gosh, that is actually the best. While I was in the fortress, I figured out something really cool about these early version blazes. They try to follow you a lot harder than modern blazes, which gave me the idea to make this sort of blaze funnel that made collecting rods easier than it's ever been before. I'm glad to have figured this strategy out because there's still a few more versions that I can use it on. Oh my gosh, that is an old school dungeon right there. Oldest dungeon I've ever found. Nice, you got iron here too. I came in pretty clutch. Back in the overworld, I thought things would continue being easy. But I ran into a big problem about version 1.1 as I was setting up the Enderman Tower strategy again. The build height limit is 128 blocks, not 256. Hunting Enderman was all right though. It's just more work. And there's something good that came out of it. If I didn't have to kill this skeleton, I wouldn't have gotten any bones. And if I didn't get any bones, I wouldn't have been able to get a puppy. Oh, Papo, it's nice of you to join me in this world. 
Plus, with the Enderman Tower, I don't get to make clutch moments like these. All right, risky moment here. Oh, it didn't work out. Um, hang on. A little bit of ring around the rosy. Oh, might as well pick up a third. No! No, I got stuck last second. No. Okay, hang on. Nobody saw that. After two nights, I was gonna take the day to locate my stronghold, and it turned out to be right off the coast of where I was hunting Enderman, so it really didn't take all that long. But it still took me two more nights to get enough pearls to finish the portal, and I was lucky enough to actually get a few extra too, because as soon as I crossed into the end, my bad spawn turned into one of the gnarliest plays of my Minecraft career. This is really not a good spawn. Yep, yep, yep. No, 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 please, please, please. Holy moly. Holy moly. I'm freaking cracked out of my mind. Leave me alone, dragon. Once I was able to bring my heart rate back down, this dragon fight went much the same as it did in 1.3, except for one thing. I brought one bed into the end with me to try out a better strategy to use in future runs. Easy. Are the credits in pirate? Credits better be in pirate. I'm upset that there's no narrator. No, is this just gonna be English again? Yeah. Now that I learned a new blaze strategy and a new dragon strategy, I pretty much wanted to play the exact same version again to see how much faster I could go. But this time in 1.2, I can actually build up to 256 again. Let's just see where we end up. I had high hopes spawning in here. I wanted this to be my best pre 1.9 run yet. I knew that I had all of the tools and all of the knowledge to pull it off, but I lost control less than 10 minutes into the run. Wow, that's a strong shot there, bud. I'm gonna throw this egg at the skeleton. Yeah. Dude, dude. No, <laughs> dude, what the? I didn't really have the drive to push as hard after that. I just spent some extra time exploring before going to collect blaze rods. Spent my days on top of the Enderman Tower doing some of this but I still made it to the end faster than the last run, and with eight beds in my inventory this time. All right, let's see if I can pull this off. Eight beds should be more than enough. That was a good hit, oh my God. That was a bad one. Not a bad strat. That was a short fight. 226. I'll take it. I'm out of these early games. That's two early versions in a row. I'm done. I'm done with those. So from 1.1 to 1.2, we got to see the first ever increase in the build height limit. And that's really the only difference I spotted, but it's a big one. And the 256 block limit remained for a whole 15 updates after its release. We all know it changed recently, but I wanted to go play the final version it was used in, which also happens to be one of the most disappointing updates in my opinion. Caves and Cliffs Part 1 I just don't think it should have happened. Caves and Cliffs had promises of all these cool world generation features, but since it was taking longer to develop than desired, Mojang was like, here, take these blocks, go have fun. And I was just sitting there like, what? Why? You can tell me it'll take longer, just give me the full thing when it's done. No, no, please, please, just take these blocks. We're sorry it's taking so long. No, I don't want these blocks, seriously. You sure? I mean, look at this one. This one makes a bunch of fun noises. Good news is, I didn't have to play 1.17 for very long. I had almost every material I needed right at my spawn and even a lava pool nearby. With a 13 minute nether spawn, I saw the fortress right away and had an easy time killing blazes. I was about to leave to go back to the overworld, but then I realized I should maybe start looking for a warp forest instead, which I found just a few minutes later. Oh, hey, no, this is beautiful. I don't know why I was so lucky, but my Enderman spawn rates were incredibly high here and I didn't even turn down my render distance for it. It seemed like I would kill one batch of them and then another would be just a few steps away. And for the first time in this challenge, I had all of my blaze rods and ender pearls in under an hour. There were still a few things I needed to collect on my way to the stronghold and I still played it safe, getting the materials for arrows and a bow as a backup in case I missed another one cycle. But I didn't need it. Two and a half minutes after entering the end, the dragon comes into perch and I just barely don't scuff it. 
Easy peasy on that one. 113, best so far for the challenge. I really just got lucky with the Ender Pearl rolls. That's what really did it. All right, well, we got my most disappointing update out of the way, but how about everyone else's? There's one that I've heard is way worse. All right, well, uh, here we are. Another disappointing update. Not that I would know. Really, I knew what it was that made 1.10 so disappointing to people. They always talk about the lack of features added with it, which I understand. But what I don't understand is how nobody ever talks about how weird 1.10 feels to play. Pretty much everything felt a bit off in this run, right from the start, too. Such a weird feeling, because it's like, the textures look old, but the world generation looks very new. With the mountains that I spawned right next to, I mean, this looks like it could be something right out of 1.18. But I guess let's get to work. XP sounds, what the heck? I kinda like it. I really wanna hear what it sounds like when I get to level five. Oh, that's kind of disappointing. It's just the little things that make me feel out of place in this game. It was weird, especially when I realized that I could craft a shield. I felt like I was in some kind of crossover playing pre 1.9, but with the modern mechanics. And the weirdness only continued as I played out the nether portion of the run too. Blazes are really weird here. And <laughs> they just, the, how do I keep getting all these sound glitches? All right, 10 rods, I'm out. I'm done with the x-ray blazes. They're so loud. Okay, why did I just slide forward like that? Please don't put me in the lava. What is happening right now? Am I in bed or am I not in bed? Uh-oh, this doesn't seem very good. I can't even, oh, I am i can't even escape? Kick me for spamming maybe. Oh, I, I locked the game. I just crashed Minecraft by sleeping. Wow, that was not what I was expecting. Hello, we're back, we're alive. We still have the blaze rods, very nice. Time to make the Enderman Tower. That's all I really need. Oh, look at that. There's a husk, one of the new features in this version. Oh, and he's gone. That was fun to talk about for a second. Once again, I found myself in a position where I only needed Enderman to finish the run, something that I could only hunt at night, which means I was again in the position where I had a lot of free time during the day. I decided to try strip mining just for fun, probably the most basic Minecraft thing you could do, and I got to experience one of the most iconic moments in the history of this game while I did it. Oh yes, dude. This, I think, is my first time mining diamonds in this whole challenge, and it feels magical. But after three nights of killing Enderman, I was ready to get off a of 1.10. And it turns out the dragon had some weird things to show me too. Do they have the sound in 1.10? Still in 1.10, no portal sound. That is crazy. This dragon, I have a feeling, is gonna be pretty rough. I think it's gonna be like the 1.13 dragon, which means insane charges, crazy fast perches, and I'm gonna get, I'm, I'm probably gonna die. Yep, I can see it already. It's exactly what this dragon is. Yep, 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 there it is. Oh, ah, dude, dude. It's not a thing. Was that not a thing? Can you not actually shoot under this? Or am I just really bad? Oh, I'm about to get smacked. Yep, yep, yep. No. All right, I get another attempt at it, I guess. Whoa! I just clutched that MLG bucket, though. Where's the fireball? Whenever she shoots, the fireball pretty much comes out of the sky. You see that? That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. What? Oh my God, I thought she was about to hit me. That's another one coming from the sky. It's so crazy when that happens. It's the weirdest, weirdest mechanic. Another one from the sky? Yeah, there <laughs> it is. That is so crazy. There we go. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take two and a half hours. 225. Two disappointing updates in a row. How about we move on to play the biggest transition to ever come to Minecraft? Two back-to-back -back updates with a line between them that separates the old from the new. 1.8.9, the final version with the old combat and the old dragon fight. I think I'm right about that. 
let's just go. I've played a handful of these old versions now, and I've pretty much had the same problem with all of them. 1.0, 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0 0.10, and 0.13. In each of these runs, I've wasted so much time waiting for days to turn to nights just to get ender pearls. But in 1.8, I changed my approach to the run to save some time. Not before looking at how weird the rabbits were, though. That is a big freaking bunny. What the? Is this? This is not normal sized. This guy's freaking massive. Holy, dude. For the first time, instead of spending the whole first day collecting materials to protect myself, I collected materials to begin the Enderman hunt right away. I was a bit too slow to build a tower by night, but I did use the dirt hole strategy and ended night one with two pearls as opposed to my usual zero. So a good first night, but I had an even better morning number two. Three diamonds. I get to make a diamond pickaxe. Six diamonds, huh? From here on out, I pretty much played like all of my other runs, but instead of going AFK during the days, that's pretty much when I would play what would normally be the first half of my run. Day two, build the tower, hunt Enderman. Day three, enter the nether and find a fortress, hunt Enderman. Day four, kill blazes at the fortress and hunt Enderman. I finished both halves of the game simultaneously, 16 pearls and nine rods on day five. Let's see what happens, I guess. I am nervous. At this point, I was confident with the bed strategy in the old end, but this dragon did not want me to move on to the new version. It gave me everything it had, but just barely couldn't take me out. Oh, that was crazy. I just got flung into the obsidian. Frick. Ooh. Oh my gosh, dude. I'm, I'm getting too comfortable with low health. Please leave, dragon. Your charges are getting kind of insane, dude. Can you chill? Give me 30 seconds, please. Dude. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's just a little laggy. I think that was the issue. I think it's my best pre 1.9 time. Not bad. We have officially crossed 24 hours now. That's pretty sick. Which means we somehow made up enough time to be back on pace, only 58 seconds behind. But I was worried that I wouldn't be able to hold that for very long. I assume the next version is going to be comparable to 1.10 and 1.13, which the two combined have a suboptimal average time. Look at that, you put a timer on for a video and you use terms like suboptimal. Anyway, while I knew I was going to have to push pretty hard on this version, I still stopped in the beginning to reflect on the good things that the combat update brought. Axes are back, cows. And again, setting up the Enderman Tower as early as possible to hunt was my first goal. But in 1.9, I still didn't collect the materials fast enough to pull it off by the first night. It didn't matter though, because in this version, I could use boats again, much easier than the dirt holes. And my rates were actually pretty good for night one. Good enough, in fact, that I was inspired to attempt the deathless route for this run. Five pearls on the first night. That's pretty dang good. After spending the next day collecting materials, my luck only continued through the second night. Enderman kept spawning and spawning and spawning. Yep, 11 pearls and no deaths so far. Great run. So this was going way faster than I expected. I knew I was only gonna need one more night, which means on day three, I had to rush the nether section. Oh, back to the laggy nether. One point, oh, fortress right there, beautiful. The lag though, lag is not it. I don't know what causes it. The performance of the 1.8 nether was awesome. This one though, I am a bit sketched out. Surprisingly, I actually like the feel of killing blazes with the ax rather than the 1.8 sword spamming. But maybe it's just because the 1.9 blazes don't move. That makes it pretty easy. With an overkill supply of 11 rods, I still managed to make it out of the nether before sunset. Perfect time. Oh my gosh, that's actually perfect time. Five more pearls through the night and I was ready to make a great time on here. But there was one thing that I still needed. I need to find chickens still. Chickens, where are you? Are chickens taken out of 1.9? Every other animal is so common except for the chicken. There we go, hey buddy. Only one of them. Oh, and there's a couple. Definitely gonna be some chickens here, right? No? No chickens for real? Lots of pigs, lots of cows, more pigs. Oh, we're here. Switchback Mongo, on the hunt for the rare Minecraft chicken. He had no idea this would be harder to find than Enderman. Harder to find than the fortress. The chicken, the one thing holding him back from completing this run. More dogs, more cows, horses. Everything is more common than the chicken in this version. There we go, there's a freaking chicken. No feather. One feather. 14 feathers, you know what? I think I'm just gonna call it with that. Hope for the best. 
126 enter the new end oh my gosh this feels so good to be back in this i'm lagging i need to turn particles off what what i was not ready for that i think i'm about to die i'm in it again dude okay i need particles now it gets super laggy with these with these particles but my goodness you can't go with invisible dragon's breath that is it the deathless run I actually I actually pulled one off somewhat a redeeming quality 135 and 1.9 if I can do an hour in 1.9 I'm sure I can do an hour in the fastest version in history 1.16 literally the only version I've ever practiced speedrunning in I've completed many runs in under an hour some in almost 30 minutes and I was hoping I'd be able to get a good time here but no no that that didn't happen all right we're gonna do 1.16 a bit different since i already have a timer mod on this version we're gonna make this one disappear look at that it's still running in the background i'll, I'll just put it back on at the end of the run now, i did approach this slower than i do when i'm trying to set a personal best i took the time to get full armor tools and a good supply of food before entering the nether where if there's any indication that this would have been a bad run it should have been this spawn Okay, maybe this wasn't a good idea. This is, um, this, um, I don't think this could have been a worse nether. Even after getting off my island, the terrain didn't get much better. This seed was just full of dead ends and lava oceans, and normally I would reset here, but I wanted to push on. One thing I've kind of learned to do in this version is find a fortress with the debug screen. With the pie chart, I can see if a mob spawner is in render distance and cross trunk borders to see what general direction it's in. The only problem with that is some bastions have mob spawners in them, which also show up on the pie chart. And of course, on this seed, that's exactly where my tools led me. Oh no, is it a bastion? It might actually be a bastion. That's a pretty high entity count. It is no. I was actually brought to a treasure bastion. No. Since I was trying to play it safe, I didn't really want to go to a bastion. But since that's where I ended up, I decided to take the gold blocks anyway and trade them for my under pearls. And then I have no idea where I'm going. I guess I'll just go back to spawn. I don't know. But I guess the good news about a bastion being my first structure is that there's a higher chance that a fortress will be my second. Okay, dude, another bastion. Many hundred blocks later, I finally have another mob spawner in render distance, and I managed to get all the way within two chunks of it, and I still see nothing. Dude, I cannot find this fortress. I don't think this exists. I seriously don't think this exists. I am literally on top of a mob spawner. It, this is not, this isn't a fortress. It's not a fortress. I'm, I'm just leaving. There's no point in going down here for a ghost mob spawner it's it, it can't be a fortress it's not a fortress oh it is a freaking fortress dude screw this game i'm done with this game sucks dude can we chill out with these spawns what is my luck man where, where did you even come from dude what is happening can we chill out for like one second i'm out man i'm never going i'm never coming here again that was my worst possible nether I could have had, I swear. How far out am I? God, dude. I'm freaking so far. So far away. Spawning this far out means I have a long distance to travel, but I eventually made it to the stronghold and had all the materials ready for an easy dragon fight. However, 1.16 wasn't done with me yet. I messed it up. Um, this run just got ruined. No, dude. Why do you have to turn right then? You want to know what the worst part about this is? I'm pretty sure I would have had that one cycle easily if my scroll wheel didn't skip these two beds and make me panic when I got to the end of the line. And maybe using the scroll wheel isn't the best way to do it, but it's what I did, and I paid the price for it. Now, I was back in the stronghold. No iron, no stone. I had to solve a puzzle just to make it out of here so I could get more materials and get back to the end. Stronghold chests didn't help me, but I used creeper explosions to get stones so I could craft a pickaxe. Made it out, found a village, got beds, snowballs for backup, and re-entered. Please, please scroll wheel. Scroll right, please. This is the test. This is the final test. This determines if I need to replace my mouse right now or not. I have a replacement ready. Yeah, 
I scuffed it. I scuffed it bad. My scroll wheel did the thing. <sighs> I use my snowballs, but the really tall towers can't be reached with them. So I have to climb. And for 1.16's final trick, as I'm scaling the tallest tower, I see the dragon land for a perch and immediately take off before I reach the top. I knew I only had a few seconds before she would hit me in outer space, and I panicked. I am a freaking idiot, man. But hey, then crystals are done, so I guess that's good. All right. 1.16, everybody. I never want to touch this version again, honestly, dude. 222 is what the in-game timer says in the game. And that's pretty close to what my timer is that I was running. So we only, it's only off by like 30 seconds. All right, well, it's uh, time to swap out the mouse, I guess. Goodbye, scroll wheel. Hi, scroll wheel. It's the exact same mouse, but this one has a working scroll wheel. Because it's new. I'm still done with 1.16 though. So as bad as I played in 1.16, it's not uncommon for that much to go wrong in that version. The new nether brought in so many variables to the game that can either really help you or hurt you. So while it is the fastest version, it's not the easiest. But which version is? This is gonna be toned back. This is easy nether, and I'm just gonna be trading for pearls. It's gonna be chill, way better than 1.16. I wanted to play through 1.15 as straightforward as possible. Just get the basic materials and get to work. But it took me less than three minutes to get distracted. I guess let's try to get a horse. Why not, right? Horses are hard to tame, huh? There we go. Back on task though, the days spent getting iron as usual before entering the much safer, easier nether than 1.16. All right, now in 1.16, the fortress, oh, it's right there, <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it would be over there. But since we're in 1.15, well the nether's a little bit more friendly, as I say, it's right over there, easy peasy. We'll be in and out of here in like five minutes. Wait, I can get horse armor for my horse. Nine, I'll leave with nine, that's probably good enough. Hey horsey, I got armor for you. Check you out. Let's look for a village. Hopefully we can find one with a cleric already in it. Oh, yep, perfect. Uh, Well, maybe not perfect. I don't think there's a cleric here. Do I make my own? Uh, yeah, we'll make our own. From here, you might think I just used the same strategy as I did in 1.14. Digging clay to trade for emeralds and using emeralds to get pearls. And you'd pretty much be right about it, except for one big difference. This time, I wasn't gonna let my important villagers wander in any caves. Smart, right? Yeah, I'm proud of that one too. And this route took almost no time at all. By 50 minutes, I have 15 pearls. So I collected up the beds from the village and headed out, making it to the portal room in under an hour. Let's just go. Let's, let's, let's do the winging. So I was excited to test out my new scroll wheel on the 1.15 dragon. But as soon as I got into the end, I realized this is not the same as 1.16. Oh, the hitboxes are scuffed though. This is the version with the scuffed hitboxes. Let's see what we can do. It's gonna be hard without the hitboxes in the right spot. I have no idea how to do this. Yeah, I got no idea what I'm doing. Nice. That's a great time. That's so much nicer than 1.16. Weird how those hitboxes worked. I can't be mad about missing the one cycle on that one. That was pretty scary trying to one cycle the dragon without hitboxes, right? Oh, pretty scary. Look at that. That's how Switchback Mongo transitions back to 1.4, huh? The pretty scary update. Yes, yes it is. Back to the old game. And really this version wasn't pretty scary, initially at least. I handled my early game the same as other runs essentially, with the exception of trying to find pretty scary parts. Ooh, gets pretty spooky down here. A spider spawner. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. I don't want that. Another spawner? Dude, double spawner. Double chest with it, too. Freaking bucket. Is that another dungeon right there? What are the odds? That's three on this seed. Was this the first? Oh, you know what? Was this the first update to have the dungeons? Maybe that's what it could be. Pretty scary features aside, with my Enderman Tower, I was steadily collecting pearls through each night. And on my day trip to the fortress, I got to use my easy spawner setup once again. 
These early version blazes are the best. And only once I was ready for the end game did this run actually get pretty scary. After locating my stronghold, I first dug in at the crazy height of Y53, the most what? shallow stronghold I've ever seen. But it was absolutely massive, and it ran much, much deeper than I would have thought. I'm on Y of three. What? Holy moly, look how dark it is. Dude, what the? This is on another freaking level. This is scary. Oh my God, get me out, dude. That's too much. After experiencing what I'm now gonna call the OG deep dark, I found the portal room and was onto the dragon fight where I thought I accidentally broke the game. Your dragon's stuck over there. I kind of like that. Did I despawn the dragon getting this far away? Is that actually a thing you can do? Cause that's kind of sick. I'm just like chilling here now. All right, well, if the dragon is far, far away, power up between the two towers. Easy as that. That is kind of sick. I did not know that was something I could do. Get me out. I'm done, Zo. Oh my gosh. That wasn't amazing. Not amazing. Well, pretty scary update complete. Now, though, I have a scarier update to play because it's the redstone update, and, and I have no idea how that works. Luckily, I don't think we need it for a run. So obviously, if redstone features were the only thing added to this update from the last one I played, it pretty much went the exact same way. I was on a bit of a faster pace thanks to the blacksmith chest I got at spawn, but any time I was saving was lost thanks to a trigger happy skeleton I ran into while hunting Enderman. No! Oh my god, dude. The freaking skeleton ruined everything. Dude, the skeleton, man. I didn't have the materials for this to fix it, man. A creeper probably just added like 20 minutes to the run. Blazes were still easy in this version and I eventually repaired my Enderman tower, got enough pearls and found the stronghold where the creeper skeleton combo almost messed me up again. Okay, I didn't need that. But believe it or not, the time lost at the Enderman tower wasn't the biggest problem I ran into on this run. What? Oh my God, I was not ready. I was now in the end with no respawn point, no spare materials left in the overworld, and I hadn't even gotten enough flint to make my bow and arrows yet. I started crafting on the island, worried that the dragon might charge me while I'm not looking. But then I remembered what I learned last run. Wait, maybe I can do the despawn trick again. I mean, I just need to get as far over here as I can and hope that the dragon flies out of render distance again. Oh, I did it. Oh, dude, okay. If she can just stay over there, I'll be all right. Thanks to that, I pretty much got to chill out in the end, craft everything that I needed, and took out some crystals before re-entering the fight. And the dragon was not happy about me cheesing the play I just made. Whoa, dude, you're freaking cheating. What is that? I guess I was cheating. It's only fair, right? Easy peasy. I'll take it. That's not awful. So what is that? That's like the exact same run as 1.4. Could have guessed it. So 1.6 now, third update in a row, which means uh, it's gonna be the same, right? Materials, Enderman Tower, Ender Pearls, Mob Spawner with three cats? Three cats, that's pretty cool. Nether with easy blazes again? No, they spawned really fast for me. And even when I made it back, I could tell something was a bit different about them. Come on. So they changed the blaze mechanics, I can tell. They don't move the same way they did in 1.4 and 0.5. Feels a lot more modern. They're actually pretty consistent with how they are current day, where I, I'm really bad at it. That's how you know they're new. But other than that, the run went about the same as the last two updates, which made me want to go out of my way to try out the big 1.6 feature after finding the stronghold. All right, well, while I would normally like to go in, there is one important thing I have to do. There it is. That's what we needed. Actually, we got lucky enough to where we have two important things we need to do. Back to the real important thing. This, the big 1.6 feature. Whoa, the writing of it is crazy. I kind of dig that. I like that. Anyway, after playing around in the portal room for a bit, I was ready to take on the Ender Dragon, which is pretty much the exact same as it was at 1.5. Whoa! Other than that, I guess. We can sub to this. Yeah, we did sub to it. Nice. 
It's thanks to the map. I definitely have the map to thank for it. I love map. Map made 1.6 good. But you know what's better than map? New map in 1.11, if we can find it. At this point in the challenge, I've managed to get three hours ahead of my goal, and I'm feeling good as I start my 16th run. And while I once again complete the same early game as I always do, when my first night of Enderman hunting gets me an abysmal one pearl, I decided to try something different in these older versions. Earlier in the run, I came across a village that I was really hoping would have a cartographer in it so I could buy the new Woodland Mansion map, but it didn't have one. It did, however, have a cleric. And while I've been avoiding these early villager mechanics ever since I misunderstood them in 1.3, I figured since I have the time, I should try leveling this guy up just to see what happens. So, after a day of collecting blaze rods and another night of enderman hunting, I begin collecting the items I need to trade with him. I've been up for two trades now. I don't know how much I need. Hello, sir. You got the good price. I, I don't... Oh! That's it! That's all it took! Uh, I mean, is that good enough to level you up? No shot that leveled you up. Brr. Easy peasy. All right, dude, it, it's game on now. I'll hunt for Enderman for this one last night and then I can just buy, dude, it's easy peasy. I can just find somebody to trade with. I'll get paper, sure, I'll get paper. So, I mean, if I can get like three or four today, if I can get four, we're, we're gonna be smooth sailing. This will be the final night. Holy. Did you get the fourth pearl last second there? Colon paper, let's go. Colon paper, what the, what am I saying right now? Coal, that, coal, and paper is what we'll get. Putting in a hard day's work. This is fun, this is turning into an adventure run. I can buy one pearl right now. <laughs> I would like to buy a pearl, thank you. That's pretty cool. That's my first pre 1.14 pearl trade ever. Two more pearls. I can get that overnight. Okay, dude, I might actually be in trouble because of this baby zombie. And the grass. Dude, are you serious right now, this freaking guy? I just want to kill an enderman. I just want to kill an enderman. Stop. Got a freaking creeper. Oh my god, what is happening right now? What is happening right now? I would like a break. Yeah, get him, dog. Please just kill the guy. Why is there a creeper standing right next to the creeper? All right, hang on. Let me just go ahead and uh, clear out my mob farm real quick. Jeez, man. All that to get one pearl. Very good mob distribution. I think I'm, I'm like, I'm at 13 now. I'll wing it on 13, I'm good with that. Well, after a night like this, I would think the rest of the game would go pretty smoothly. And of course, I'd be wrong about that. No, oh, I, I panicked. I got hit with the, with the fireball, I panicked. It's fine though. Whoa, no. That's how you finish it. Oh my gosh. That's the first time I've ever seen that. When did they add the end? Was it 1.11? I'm going through that. Whoa. That is sick. All right, now I need to kill another one to get back and actually end the, end the run. I'm always level 68. How do I, it's like I'm always the same level when I enter the end. Never, never 67, never 69. I'm always 68 when I leave. Oh, timer. Well, we're in the home stretch now. It's time for the final pre 1.9 version of this challenge. And funnily enough, it became my least favorite update after this. Version 1.7. Uh, this is awful. I have two songs playing on top of each other in the menu. <laughs> this sounds terrible. Awful. On paper, it's the same thing as 1.6, but with pistons now. So it should play the same, unless you roll this seed. Wow, it's like being right back on the 1.0. Honestly, this world had a nice full circle effect to it. The more I played it, the more it reminded me of the first seed that I had in 1.0. But I managed to eventually find some land and get on with the gameplay, which was busted. 
What the heck kind of spawn is that? Okay. 1.7 is like broken. Well, this guy like, does he just not care about me? We, we chill? We're just fine, we're cool. We're cool, huh? Okay, dude. Oh, oh, now. <laughs> 1.7 man is so busted. What is this? I'm I'm doing a new world. This is this is dumb. Scene number two definitely looked a lot better than the first, and I played it long enough to get all the basic materials. But when I found myself stuck in a jungle, that biome seemed to give the game these consistent stutters that started to give me a bit of a headache, which made me reset again. Seed number three though played great for the beginning of the run. I used my Enderman Tower for the final time to collect my pearls, but as safe as this strategy's been through the entire challenge, it was no match for the 1.7 behavior. What the, what is happening? Wait, wh what just happened? That baby zombie was like in the corner? Wait, he's still here. How did you get here? I didn't know how to kill this guy. I don't even know what to do. Oh, oh. I can't even hit him. Hello? <laughs> Dude, he's freaking cracked. <laughs> what? He's still there. I can't even hit him. I I think he's glitched out. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna, can I lure him out? He's literally invincible. This is the Philza zombie. I can't even touch this guy. Oh, I hit him. This guy's wasting a lot of my time. And now he's just dan dancing. He's just dancing over there. Here, jump in here. Jump in here. Yeah, there you go. Now you're stuck. But after this, I managed to keep it together. Split the nether section into two separate days and no more cracked baby zombies to ruin my pearl hunting. Since this was the last pre-1.9 run, I got to enjoy digging into the portal room for the final time. And while I forgot to collect wool for beds, I had plenty of arrows made for the slower but still easy dragon fight. Not bad. I had to reset two times, but it's still like the same time as my other pre-1.9 runs pretty much. Say goodbye to this. This has been fun. I'm not sure what it did, but it's been fun. For my last 1.9 to 1.15 run, I'm playing on the World of Color version, 1.12. And I think this update has slept on pretty hard. I've seen some people rank it as their least favorite update when I think it undeniably brought so much life to the game. I mean, so much of what the best builders do out there wouldn't be possible without this update. And I personally like the addition of concrete so much that I went to all the trouble to build something out of it on the first day. Inspirational. After that, I continued on like normal, hunting Enderman through the night, but also finding a few desert temples to loot when the sun came up. One of which had a pretty helpful item inside. Looting one, oh my K. Yeah, I'm putting that, I'm getting enough iron to put that on. And I didn't think this would have the greatest impact on the run, but I was mistaken. After enchanting my sword, I got 100% drop rates for the rest of the Endermen that I killed. So while my spawn rates were low, getting as little as two Endermen a night, this book saved me a lot of time. It also saved me a lot of time with the blaze spawner. Getting up to 11 rods in two minutes is the fastest collection I've had. And while it increased the mob drop rates for me, for a minute, I thought it had the power to increase rates of other things too. Because on my way to the stronghold, this is what I ran into. Hey, pink sheep, no way. Oh, huh? whoops. What? Okay, okay, yeah, these, these things are stupid. Literally back to back. Oh, three of them. Well, with that, I'm going to assume that World of Color probably increased these rates. Yeah, that's a fourth right there. <laughs> yeah. Once I figured out what was going on, though, I made it to my stronghold where the portal room really tried its best to hide from me. Hey, spider, where's this portal at? I'm ready to go. I'm ready to end this game. Oh, it's right here. How do I get there? Oh, wow. It's literally hidden. That's insane. But I was now on to kill the scariest ender dragon for the last time. I figured out that all ender dragons from 1.9 to 1.13 are the same, and they're by far the hardest. The low swoops are almost undodgeable, the perches are insanely fast, and their charges after a perch are almost too quick to react to. It's the one that I've died to the most. But now, on my fifth time facing it, I really got to show how much I learned.
Oh, beautiful. Heck yeah, dude. Easy. There it is, dude. That is 19 versions. It's been good. <laughs> I got an Endermite. No way. That is sick. We have come a long way over the course of this challenge, and so far, I've gotten exactly what I wanted out of it. With an average time of two hours and 47 minutes on my first five runs, and two hours and three minutes for my last five that I've completed, I could tell that I was learning. That's all I wanted this whole time, a sign of improvement. And now I was on to the finale, the version I was looking forward to the most because it's the one everyone is talking about. I had six and a half hours left on the clock to enjoy the wild update, though not all of it ended up being enjoyable. I couldn't have asked for a more beautiful spawn to close out with, and deciding to play 1.19 after all other versions that came before it really put into perspective just how much work has gone into this game. I have a much greater appreciation for it than I did for 1.18 at the start of this challenge. And really, I thought this run would play much the same as 1.18, but the seed I was lucky enough to load into quickly changed that, and it led me on a bit of a side quest. This is a bad idea. This is definitely a bad idea. Yeah, it's barely a lush cave. Dude, it is so deep. That's the deep dark right there. What the? I have it right underneath me at spawn? I want to throw all my stuff and go down there. Frick it, man. I'm just going to go ahead and lose everything intentionally. I'm touching the deep dark. Any, sh any shriekers? There's a catalyst. What are the odds that I have an ancient city right under me at spawn? That's what that freaking is. That's what this is. Are you serious? What are the odds? I got the darkness effect. I can't see anything. I remember in one of the earlier snapshots, I had to search so long to find one of these. They've changed them a lot since I first visited. I don't know what that wood's supposed to be. I haven't seen that before. Is there something under this wool? I can make a respawn point. I'm going over to this wood structure. I'll place my bed here. Bad idea. Where's a chest? Good jump there, buddy. There's a zombie here. That's not fair. Who brought the zombie here? I want to trick. I want to spawn a warden. I just want to do it. All I did was touch the water, dude. All right. As soon as I open this chest, a warden's gonna spawn. I think. Um. So let's just do it. Enchanted apple. It didn't spawn. Let's do it. Let's wing it. Get me out of here. Where the frick is he spawning, dude? Just keep climbing. It's fine. I struggled to exit the deep dark as I've exhausted my food supply. I have to rely on rotten flesh I get from zombies I kill just to sprint. But once I make it out and realize that I've survived one of the most dangerous scenarios in the game, I'm inspired to attempt the deathless run again. But that didn't last very long. <gasps> I'm such an idiot. I'm such a freaking moron. <laughs> uh, I wanted to see if it went down to the deep dark, and now some of my stuff probably did go down to the deep dark. Can I land in that water? What are the odds I can pull this off? Zero. <laughs> no worries. I have another plan. Here's what we can do. Just a little bit of stone mining, and we're good. Perfect little elevator. Oh, God. We need to get that bed. I need that bed. I need that bed. Oh, I got it. Thank you very much. Did that actually go down? It actually goes down to the ancient city. What the heck, man? Um, I lost my pants. <laughs> Where'd my pants go? My pants may be down in the ancient city. Once I had regrouped and made sure that I had everything I needed, I headed for the nether through a lava pool that was right next to my spawn. And once again, just like 1.16, 17, and 18, I had no intention to look for a bastion. I was just gonna find the fortress, then a warped forest, and get out of there. But no, no, no. Not on this seed, it's not that simple. Oh, we got a spawner. No shot. Yeah, it would be that way. How far? 11 chunks that far. I have a feeling this is gonna be a treasure bastion. That's a piece of blackstone right there. Oh, it is. Frick me, man. Dang it. All that work for a bastion. I tried so hard. 
and goth so far. Fortress right here, right? I think, wait, that's a bastion right there. Okay, so we're over two once again. I'm pretty sure that would mean that my best bet is gonna be that way then. And if we don't have, it, it is possible to have four bastions in the four quadrants. Still no spawner in 16 chunk render. Hey, we got the fire res, nice. We won't die here. Oh, we got two? Dunzo? Yeah, thank you, sir. You did good. Are you serious? I really dug into a bastion. I went three for three on bastions. I've seen three bastions today. I'm just gonna keep going. Keep going until I find a fortress. Well, actually, frick, man, I need that warp forest. There's something broken with the AI, man. Why does everybody have to be on that block? There's three right here. Like, why is everybody hanging out right here? Oh God, I'm gonna die. Nope, I'm freaking pro. Here we go. Oh, they're towering again. Look, I haven't, I've made an efficient Enderman farm for a speed run. No. All right, well, you know what? Watch this. Watch, I just made an Enderman trap. Come on, Enderman. Yeah, here we go. Made the trap, set the trap, got it. That's 12 pearls. All right, I mean, let's just keep running this way, I guess. Fortress is definitely gonna be over here, right? 100%. We're not going four for four bastions, right? What? I have gone four for four on bastions. Where are the fortresses? I just want to I just want to find a fortress. That's all I want. I just want a fortress. One fortress. Do I have a spawner? No spawner. No spawner within 16 chunks. I have a spawner. Ladies and gentlemen, can it be a fortress? It is literally a bastion. How? How is this possible? We could have been done with this run by now. Hey, I got, good news is I have 16, 16 pearls. You have got to be kidding. There's literally no way, man. Six bastions. How am I doing this? 1100 blocks out. How am I doing this? I should not have messed around with the warden at the beginning. I did not realize how much time this is about to take. A whole hour and 25 minutes later, after traveling thousands of blocks for bastion after bastion after bastion, I finally find the one thing I needed the whole time. Finally! Thank God, dude, they exist. I can't believe it. And at this point, I knew I was set to complete my goal. The number of things that could go wrong now would make it almost impossible to lose. I just had to collect my blaze rods and make the journey back to the portal without dying. And it felt so good to know that I never had to come back here. Get me out of this nether, I never coming back here. All that was left now was the end game. Something that I could do quickly in this version. The only thing that threw me off a bit was that the eyes of Ender behave a bit differently now. Down on a corner? But maybe it's just because I was on a pre-release. Everything else went as planned. I found the portal, made some food, got materials for beds, and entered the end for my last shot to mess up a one cycle. You know what? It's the broken mouse. That's all it was this whole time. 20 versions in under 48 hours. Oh my gosh, man. Passing through each update, full game of each update in two days. I know it may not seem like much to people. There's records in this category that are far better than 48 hours. But for me, it's just an adventure. One I've wanted to take for so long. I've had the opportunity now to see firsthand how much this game has grown over the years. And it only makes me more excited to keep playing. And actually, you know what? I'm ending here. I, I kind of want to go play Minecraft now. I'll see you in the next video.